Muscle Car Challenge converged on Cootamundra Airport once again in September 2022. The event is open to all chrome bumpered cars and any American or Australian built six and eight cylinder vehicles, both old school and new school muscle combined for a fun and relaxed weekend away racing. Thursday sees the drive to Cootamundra meeting at Pheasant's Nest for those who wish to compete in the Street Kings shootout on Friday afternoon. Competitors are split into True Street and Pro Street with shootouts for both on the Saturday afternoon. All of the shootouts will be covered in future videos, so don't forget to subscribe. The morning of both days is open practice, but there was plenty of grud runs and fun to be had. My name is Sonia, this is my dad's BF Senator. This weekend it's mine. It is an LSA supercharger with a 3000 stall converter in it. And hopefully this weekend we run some good numbers. Hey guys, James from Next Finance. We're nationwide, we finance everything from cars, bikes, boats, uh, muscle cars, engine packages. Uh, if you want to go on a holiday as well, we can do that too. I've had a passion for cars since I was a kid. I actually grew up in a workshop, I grew up in a paddle bedding shop and uh, mechanical as well. It's a, good, it's a good lead to be able to meet more people and then be able to have a lot more fun as well. Again, the weekend's been, been great. Seeing some of the cars, seeing everyone come out, have some fun, turn the tyres, have their barbecues. Mate, it's just absolutely great. It's one of those weekends that you can't miss. You have to be here for. Um, my name's Damien from Canberra. Um, this is my 82 VH, uh, mild 383, built myself. Um, most of the car I built myself. Uh, turbo 350, nine inch. Um, been a pet project for about 13 years now, and first event, first time here, and loving it. It's awesome. Just here to have fun. You know? Not not worried about times. I mean, I've got a fair idea of what it does run. So, but yeah, just sort of might work on that if I want to go faster. Although all wanted to have fun, we still had some pretty serious cars in attendance and some fierce competition. It might sound easy, but running a 10-second pass at Cootamundra in a two-wheel drive is difficult let alone a nine second pass. And in total, we had 18 cars run into the tens and six cars run into the nines, along with a new V8 record. Incredible stuff. Uh, my name's Daniel, this is my V8 Commodore, uh, Turbo LS. Just build it to have a bit of fun, come and give it a hide. Uh, power Glide, 760 at the wheels. Come down, have some fun, blow some tyres. Uh, this is my first time and yeah, be coming again. It's awesome. Good fun, huh? Yeah, it's mad. Awesome, mate. Sick. G'day guys, I'm Charlie Dixon. I'm, uh, I play for Port Adelaide Football Club. And it is, if you're Charlie Dixon. Dixon has two. Uh, in my spare time, I have a YouTube channel called Driving with Dixon, and um, this is my first time here at Cootamundra. So I don't get that many opportunities to be able to like step on this, step on it, and actually feel the power and, and like do a full run. So, and because Adelaide doesn't have a track at the moment, so like I got to travel wherever like Heathcote or here to go and do something. So I'm just keen to be a part of it and be a part of the, and see everything else. You know, like I, I mean, it's always good to like do a really good time, but at the same time, I'm just here to have fun. The reason I'm here is not for an interview. <laughs> I just wanted to see if you actually fit in the car. <laughs> just, mate. I've got to like take all the cushions out of the seat <laughs> so I can get a helmet on in the bars. It's ridiculous. <laughs> and I've got to sit down like this because my head just bounces on the bars. But, I don't um... know how you fit in anything, mate. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I thought I had a difficult in a Japanese car, but this is worse. <laughs> exactly right. All uh, right, firstly, uh, how much fun have you had? What's the hype versus the reality like at Kutamundra? Yeah, no, I've been having a blast. Just trying to get, um, trying to get it down is like, everyone talks about it but it's actually ridiculous like trying to work it down and but like 
yeah, having an absolute blast and it's been, the hype's real, man. It's, it's awesome to come out here and actually do it and see it and there's some fast cars. Where it's are awesome. your times at so far? I've been like pretty much a bracket car, 10, 6, 10, 8, like, and 140 mile an hour. That's it. Won't do any more. <laughs> Mate, 10, at that mile an hour, mid 10s is actually like, it's good. Like, yeah. it's actually, you're not, you're not off the pace, to be honest. The guys are running 9.5 are doing 165 mile an hour. Yeah, I know, that's wild. But like, I, I don't know if I've got too much back pressure because of the uh, bigger turbo, smaller rear housing. It just won't go past that. It should be doing more than that. And it, I feel like when I get to the top, it just won't go any further. So, but mate, I'm having a blast. I'm just That's the going. main thing, right? Exactly. Awesome, <laughs> Before we take a look at the nine second cars at the event, let's take a look at the category leaders. First up, the quickest Chrysler was Arthur's Plymouth Roadrunner. The quickest Chev at the event was James's Camaro. The quickest new school Ford was Joe Camilleri's crazy XR6 Turbo from Victoria. Uh, how frustrating is it when there's an O on the end when you prefer a 9 on the end? That was 10 O. Really? Yeah. It's probably the best run I've had here ever, I reckon. Well, this, I, re I was just part. about to say, in that was the part. best pass I've watched this thing ever do. Yeah. It looks like it worked in the first half. I reckon now in the back half a bit of... What do you reckon? Tweak it up a bit, yeah. I'll Squeeze get, it up? Get on the staff here, I think, and we're going to put another tune. At the... Leave the first half the same, I reckon. Yeah. Because that actually worked. Yeah, it worked well. It'll be, a, it'll be a nine today. It'll be the first... It'll actually be the first two-wheel drive barra into the nines. Cool. I've already got the other one. I've got... Fast, hey? I've got the fastest all wheel, haven't I? Yeah, I know, you've got fastest yeah. all wheel, now you just need fastest two wheel. I think you already are quickest at 10 0, but yeah. let's get a 9. Cool, man. Thanks, Andrew. The quickest naturally aspirated car was Steve Alexopoulos in the Holden Tirana, who ran a 10 3 at 142. Next in the nines was Peter in his Turbo LS Commodore ADHD VN. I wanted to come to the Kunamundra because just to have some fun with my car after I built it. Um, I saw a lot of these video clips on YouTube and Motive DVD, so I frothed out and I wanted to come up and enjoy with the boys and um, yeah, have some fun on the track and yeah, have some fun. So my first time here, I've heard all the hype from all the Melbourne crew, um, social media, um, your YouTube channel, Motive DVD, and um, yeah, it's good. Um, track's very hard. Um, took me half a day to get used to it, but yeah, it's all good now. Does it make you feel better or worse knowing that some other two-wheel drives have gone 9.5 here? Does that give you hope or what? It does give me hope, and uh, I'm trying to chase that 9.5 as well. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. It's How good. are you going so far? Where are you at so far? Um, so far, I've been playing with the settings, speaking to my tuner. I'm in Melbourne, and um, yeah, just playing with the settings now. So yeah, leaving a 13 pound. That time it gripped and went good, felt good. So um, yeah, it should be good. So. Main thing is you're having lots of fun. Yeah, heaps of fun, heaps of fun. Um, I feel like I, there's an award I forgot. Um, the award should be uh, best VN, or more specifically, <laughs> the first VN to make Andrew safe. Yeah, that's a sick VN. Oh, that's good. That's you good. Do, how often do you hear that? Uh, I've heard a couple of times, but from you, it's pretty good. So I'm happy with that. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Thank you very much. James Cassiotis was next in the ASG Motorsport built twin turbo Tirana. The quickest rotary at the event was David Muscat's Boss 100 Mazda R100 with a 13B under the hood. The 
The quickest old-school Ford and six-cylinder was Louis' Barra Shaker XE Falcon, sporting some serious upgrades from last time to put him deep into the nines. Mate, you're the quickest two-wheel drive barrow now by like a massive long shot here. You're pro the quickest rear wheel, the quickest front engine rear wheel drive ever here is a 947 or something. So uh and you're nearly up to Tony mate. Alright. Now we should get him by the end of the night or the end of the day. <laughs> Dude, that is killing it. I don't want to race through my GDR anymore. There you go, I said <laughs> <you> it. Go, <laughs> the quickest Holden and quickest and fastest car outright was Tony Cassiotis in the Prestige Motor Gallery Tirana built and tuned by ASG Motorsport. At the end of the weekend, this was the top 10 leaderboard. As well as the Street Kings, True Street and Pro Street shootouts, which are coming in future videos, and make sure you subscribe, we also held a 1 8 mile Pro Street shootout on day one for a little bit of extra fun. Our first pairing in the 1 8 mile Pro Street shootout, Nikolai in the VH Commodore up against Robert in the Kingswood, Nick Adams. Our event controller bringing them both up into stage by hand and then a few steps back on the light. Here we go. Good reaction time from both drivers. They leave evenly, but you can see Commodore out in front. Looks like he's got the top end power to stay there. Only an eighth mile to get the job done. And Nikolai gets the win in the Commodore. Next pairing, Charbel in the Ford Cortina. 73 Hulk up against Brent Davis in the Spool VL. Trying to get him lined up here. A little bit further, a little bit further. Here we go. Oh, Brent is gone way too early. He has jumped by a mile. And that means the win will be handed straight over to Charbel in the Cortina. He is through to the next round. Our next pairing, Bernard in the Ford Cortina up against Aaron Gregory in Hellraiser. The HR panel van from ASG Motorsport, event sponsor, down from Queensland. Twin turbo V8, well over 1,500 horsepower available whenever he wants it, but has to feed it in here at Kudamundra. Even start for both drivers, no one jumps. And he's struggling for traction, but once he starts to put a bit of power in, it wants to fry the tyres, but Aaron still gets the win in Hellraiser and through to the next round. Next pairing, James Cassiotis up against Steve Alexopoulos in the Tirana, both Ford or Tiranas. James in the left lane is another ASG Motorsport twin turbo V8. Let's get him up there, get him lined up. A few steps back before the light. Both drivers cut a good light. Feeding that power in, naturally aspirated versus turbo. You can see the top end power. There's only an eighth mile to get it done, but James just able to get there by a bit over a car length. Simon Borg straight up to the line up against Mark in the Tirana. Nitrous fed beast. This thing is quick. This should be a good battle. Let's go. Both drivers getting out of there well, but ball gone in the little Capri. He is out of there, bouncing around, but putting that power down and an easy win for Simon Borg. He's just out of there quick. Tony Cassiotis, another one of the ASG Motorsport Twin Turbo V8 cars uh, from Prestige Motor Gallery. He's lined up for a buy run. He doesn't have to do the run if he doesn't want to, but Tony for you, right? There we go, getting another run down Kudamundra Airport's runway for that 1 8 mile.
Our next pairing now, Stephen in the Capri up against the other Stephen, Nikolovsky in the Toyota Corona Virus. 7M GTE, six cylinder under the hood. Light goes off, both there. Nikolovsky a little bit asleep at the line, wait for it to come up on the trans brake. Has he got enough to drive back around in the deep end? He's coming back, but it's not enough. Capri gets the win. Louis now, the Barra shaker up against Emirali in the VL Commodore. Good reaction time from both drivers. They get out of there together, but that Barra, huge power, well over a thousand, and even able to use it in the eighth mile, and Louis goes through for the first round win. Round two now, Aaron Gregory back around up against Nikolai, the VH Commodore up against the HR panel van. Monster of a car and Raw 364 proven pretty handy down Cootamundra Airport's runway. Let's get him lined up, light off. Aaron Gregory out of there, but it just lights the tires as it starts to ramp onto power. Gets off it, back on it. He's still able to get the win over the eight with Hellraiser. Next up now, Charbel back around in the Cortina up against Cassiotis in the twin turbo Holden Tirana. Here we go. Both drivers, great reaction time on the light, but James gets a couple of car lengths instantly. Power from the top end. Looks like Charbel may have had an issue there. Cassiotis gets the win. Simon Borg now up against Stevens Ford Capri. So it is Capri versus Capri in this battle. I think a Capri is going to win. It's pretty safe to say, right? All right, good reaction time from both drivers. But as you can see, it's all over before it even really gets started. And the win, Simon Borg in the Ford Capri. Great run. Another good matchup that seems to happen a lot here at Cootamundra. Louis the Barra shake up against Tony Cassiotis in the Tirana. Both drivers cut a pretty good light, but Cassiotis is out of there soon. Eh? Once he's out in front, as long as he can put that power down, he should be able to stay there, and he does. An eighth mile means he can't use that top end power, and Cassiotis gets the win. Now it's Aaron Gregory up against James Cassiotis. You can see the sun starting to set very quickly at Cootamundra. This stuff is getting done with the headlights on. James Cassiotis gets a great light, and he's out of there. And he puts away Aaron Gregory in the Tirana. Great run. Simon Borg back around in the Capri up against Louis in the Barra Shaker. Both cars looking really strong here over the 1.8. Not a lot of room to use that top end power. Great reaction. Great light from both drivers. Louis already a couple of car lengths out in front. Now he used that Barra power. Stays there. Gets the win through to the next round. Now it's the final. Louis up against James Cassiotis this time. Let's see what happens. Both drivers, great reaction time. Pretty even to the 60, pretty even to probably about half track. Tiny bit of extra top end power he can use and James Cassiotis gets the win. Let's have a look at the replay now. Not a lot in it. Wheel spin there from Louis at the start. That was just enough for James to get out in front. They're all ganging up on Louis. Stand on the roof, Jamie. Stand on the roof, you're in a